And now, from Emu's world, somewhere in the heart of England, comes... We found you at home. See if the phones are going to be working. Uh, but actually, I'm sure that they will be because I've been promised that as this is the last show, um, that they're definitely going to work. And the reason I know that is because last weekend, Emu and I, we were invited, weren't we, to go to Wigan to go to the big carnival there. And thank you, everybody up at Wigan, for making us feel so welcome. And while we were there, we found out <laughs> that we were sponsored by British Telecom. Yes, that's very good, isn't it? And they were talking to me about the fun we have with the, pro with the uh, phone. And just to prove that their phones do work, even in cars, they took a picture of me sitting in the car speaking on the phone, didn't they, with uh, Emu. And I think we've got the picture somewhere. Have you got it? There it is, over there, yes. There it is, and there's us on the phone, and we're actually talking on that phone. It's actually working in the car. So, with fingers crossed, we're going to do it this time. Now, as you remember, last week... What was it last week? Yes, last week... The question was, what did Emu receive for being a good patient at the dentist? And the answer was, stickers. You got some special little stickers for being a good patient, didn't you? And, and every, every one of you got it right. So we've got all your letters together and we're going to have a look. But before we have a look at some letters, why don't we look at today's super prizes that you can win on the wheel. What have we got? And you can have lots of fun if you win this fabulous pogo stick. Yeah! Whoa. Pogo, lovely! Yeah. 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 And now you can listen to your favourite music with this personal cassette player. Yeah! yeah! And you can even have it on while you're jumping up and down and listen to the music. That'd be good, wouldn't it? But why don't we look at our super star prize? Star prize, star prize, star prize. And if you're really lucky, you can win this BMX rally burner. Yeah! Good. Oh, I do hope it goes. So. Don't just waste any time. Let's get lovely Lorraine in. Hello, lovely Lorraine. Hello. <laughs> oh, look. And you've gone through all that, those Saxon mail yes. with all the right answers, which was stickers. And you've pulled out one, have you? Yes, Tina Flippance, who's age 13, from Banbury. Tina Flippance from Banbury, who's age 13. And you're going to get her on the yes. phone right now. I'll tell you what we'll do. Because it's our very last programme, why don't we just extend our star prize area. Shall we do that? Could you? Shall we, shall we do it, kids? Have a bit of fun. Yay! So, apart from getting it on the actual sales, if you get it one number either side, that's what we'll say, there or there, uh, there rather, then that's when we're going to call it a star prize. And this is that moment where we all wait and see if British Telecom are right. And I'm sure that they are. Then yeah, perhaps I should put it in a car. Because <laughs> I know that they definitely work in cars. So, can you hear anything? No. You can't hear anything at all. I knew we'd do this. <laughs> I knew this would happen on the last show. Go on, okay. have another go. Right, just put it down and count to ten. Take your finger off. Now press the button and we'll do it again. Of course, if you get, the, we've got to ask you a question, as you know, when we do when we do get through to you. And uh, if you get it right, then you have a go at the wheel. If you get it wrong. Well, we've got some lovely prizes for you. Consolation prizes, and I can hear silence. Um, <laughs> a T-shirt, a pink windmill T-shirt. Yeah, stop it. And a, a beautiful book of lovely poems written by that man there. So, uh, don't do that. Stop it. So, in fact, I could read you the book while we're waiting. Um, no. Yeah. Yes, she's here. I heard something. 
Oh, I think we should give her a big round of applause. Yeah. Is that Tina? Is that Tina? Yeah. And you, are you watching the show? Yeah. Oh, we've pulled your letter out, Tina. Now we've got to ask you a question. The question is, what do the Americans celebrate on July the 4th? What do the Americans celebrate on July the 4th? Independence Day. Independence Day! Fingers crossed, Tina, because we're going to try and get one either side of the sales for you, or if not on the sales themselves, for a superstar prize. Hang on, here we go. We're going to spin the wheel now for Tina. you've won all right yeah so we're gonna we're gonna post it off to you you have great fun trying to get that through the letterbox yeah. all right so yeah. that'll be coming to you thanks for playing the game we'll see okay. you again bye okay. and off you go chaps get it over to the post office is that super i always did that stop it stop it Nice. Now then, where did I leave my tape measure? I know I put it down in here somewhere. I know it's... Oh, oh, will you look at that? Oh, silly me. It was round my neck all the time. <laughs> Redford! Redford! <laughs> you to stay still. Look, I haven't got the time standing here draped in this, looking like the Statue of Liberty. I've got work to do, wishes work. <laughs> well, I, oh dear, look at it. I'll have to start all over again. Oh, come here and stand still. Don't you dare tell me what to do, you brass-plated T-urn. Oh, oh, yes. We've got to insult time again, have we? Mm. Upset me. Go on, upset me. Spoil my creative spark. I'm trying to make you look your best for the Wizard's Union tonight. Well, you must thank you, Redford, because the magnificent Frey will be there. He is the president of the WI, the Witches Institute. Yes, but look, I've got a lot of alterations to make. So come over and stand over here and stay still. Now, yes, I'll have to put a few tucks in there. Mm, little ruche up there somewhere. Take it in there and... Oh, yes. Yes, I'll have to let it out quite a bit there. Mm, yes, well, a few rucks there. Oh, that hem will have to be turned up, yes. Mm, yes. Then, what I'll do then, you see, I'll take the rest of it and I'll drape it in frills to hide all the folds. Hide all the folds? Hmm. Aren't you going to iron it? <laughs> Not the folds in the material, dear. The folds in you. <laughs> That's very personal. Mrs. Grotbeck, stand still. You ruined my whole creation. I'll create something in a minute. Oh. It'll be a huge pile of junk on the floor that was once a robot. Now, come on. Before I go down to that WI meeting tonight, I am going to go down to that pink windmill and grab hold of some brats. Come on. Oh. I don't know why I carry on. I really don't. Do you know... I'm sure the Emanuels never had it like this. <gasps> hey, why don't we go to another part of Emu's world, albeit for the last time in this present series. I'm talking about going... Ah, oh, never mind. I'm talking about going over to Boggle's Kingdom. That kingdom that's been locked away in time, hidden behind a time zone, and run, run by King Boggle.
Ah, oh, two points for the king. Oh, I bet he's still fast asleep. Oh, good morning, you got chop chop. Good morning, your majesty, up nice and early. Ooh, nice day. Or chop number four, eh? Ah, oh, yes, sir. I jump number four. There you are, two points, sir. Ooh. Dreamy village milkman. That's before I start all my other jobs, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Very busy. Like me, I'm always busy. In fact, more busier than you. I have to be being a king, you see. Oh, yes, you wouldn't know because you're a peasant. <laughs> oh, yes, I've got things like, oh, state affairs, you know, and opening of parliament and council meetings and inspecting the guards all day long. I thought we might do fishing this afternoon. That's not a bad idea, that's your majesty. Uh, see you at the river after lunch. Don't forget the bait, John. Oh, of course, your oh, majesty. Goody. Goodbye, Goodbye. Goodbye. I Japanese samurai all over the east. Uh, I'll job John Baxter at your service. Many days travel, Bagus Kingdom. Wish visit Windaku Castle. Pay greatest respect, Honorable King. A whimsical castle, yes, sir. It's about a half a mile that way. Good. My ward, Princess Mayosoto, is much tired. Princess Mayosoto? Name means forget me not. Oh, indeed. How could one ever? We go. Mm, princess, forget me not. Most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Still, when will I ever see her again? Wait a minute. They're going to Whimsical Castle. And King Boggle doesn't know. I'll take a shortcut across the fields and warn him. <laughs> Your Majesty, Your Majesty. Oh, oh. Joff, Joff. Oh. How dare you come bursting into the royal household in that manner, you uncouth, ignorant peasant, you. Oh, no, no, my dear. I, I'll, I'll handle this, you know. John, I, I can't possibly go out here. I've got to do what the... No, 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 no. Listen, Your Majesty. There's a procession on its way to you from the east. A Japanese warlord, he said he was. A samurai. A most beautiful princess. Princess? Royalty? Oh, fortune has smiled on me at last. I can have an intelligent conversation with people of my own kind. Royalty. It's them, it's them. They're here, they're here. Boggle, we'll meet them in the main hall and take that stupid apron off. Oh, it's John, John, who, 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 who did you see was going to be here? In... It's a samurai, sire. They come from a country in the east called Japan. Oh, oh. A country of ancient customs and very strict codes of behavior. Oh, well, we mustn't offend him, John. I wouldn't want him to think, you know, we, when you... If it, how, how, what, what, what shall I do not to... Um... Your Majesty, you can do no wrong if you follow him. Just do as he does. Good idea. Yes. Off you go, John, and announce us. Me Once first. Sire. I'm the king. Oh, it's time you are. <laughs> Castle of Grand King, King of Western World. Western World, strange customs. I, Samurai, not to wish insult the King. With most respect, Lord Samurai, would suggest follow King. Do whatever he do. For to eyes, I do exactly you say. Take that stupid apron off. Oh, of course. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, the Japanese warlord, Samurai, and Princess Forget-Me-Not. How do you do? <laughs> I shall call you Sam. <laughs> oh, John, perhaps you can help our guest. I think he's dropped something on the floor, you know. You know, Your Majesty, the custom. Remember what I told you? Oh, Been travelling long, have you? Much time. Yes. Of course, sir. 
What's the weather been like? Where you been? Weather is kind to those who are troubled. Oh, <laughs> this is good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, of course, over here it's been terrible. The boss has played havoc with the strawberries, you know. Uh, shall we take some refreshments up here? Oh, oh yes, refreshments. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank Would you care to join us, Princess? Not you or Job John. Thank you. You're very kind. But I've been travelling sitting down for many hours. Would like very much to exercise legs and walk in gardens. Uh, yes, that's a very good idea, Your Majesty. Leave you free to get on with the affairs of state. Uh, I will escort the Princess, if that's permissible. I follow custom. Yes. <clears throat> you go to the garden. Forget not to follow King. Oh, good. Let's get started, eh? I'm famished. <laughs> 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 English wife of royal blood to live with me in my country. Oh, really? Wife of warlord would live much luxury. Many servants, jewels, carriages, as you would expect. Oh, well, uh, I wouldn't know. Not being married myself. <laughs> and uh, have you found anyone yet? Unmarried and of royal blood. You are the first. Oh, um, would you like to see the gardens as well? Uh, come along, uh, Sam. <laughs> You're so kind and so handsome. And you are the most beautiful princess I've ever met. But you know nothing of me or my country. True. But I do know a Japanese legend, one that could tell of you and me. And 
said, me, Japanese boy, I love you. I do love you. You, Japanese girl, you love me. Please say you do. In a blue and white kimono, she became his happy bride from that day. Just as much as they once were Every night he kisses her And says, me, Japanese boy, I love you I do love you That is the way that it should be When love is true My journeys are over. I have reached a decision. Come, we go to your brother. Come. Yes, uh, come on. Sam's going to make an announcement. <gasps> and so, when I see these two young people in garden and so much in love, I say to myself, my search is over. No longer need I look for a wife. I retire. Make your job John Warlord in my place. He have permission to marry princess and take over from me. Come. I suppose it was all right for our job, John, really, all that. Well, yeah. <laughs> very good for him, is I should miss him, though. He was a very good friend to me, you know, our job, John. Oh. Our job, John, I thought you'd have been on your way to Japan. <laughs> it never would have worked, Your Majesty. I could never be a warlord. I'm just our job, John, from Dreamy Village. I'll tell you this, though. I'll never forget, Princess Forget-Me-Not. Fish are biting, John. Oh. <laughs> so they are, Your Majesty. <laughs> oh. Wasn't that lovely? Oh. Well, I, wish, I think we should be seeing more of Boggle in the Hey! There's somebody at the door. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Okay, this is a raid. Redford, get off! Oh, Mrs. Grobbegs, do stand still. You're you're ruining my my whole new model. Oh, look at that now. Look, I've lost another pleat. Oh, do you know, it's still not right. It still needs a little something. Hi, just a minute, Grobbegs. Yeah, you've come to the right place if you're looking for trouble. Yeah. Looking for trouble? Yeah. Ha! I'm looking for you, my little leamy weeby. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking for some brats. I'm looking for inspiration. Something, a little something to finish off my creation. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, he, he actually means this. You see, he's, he's making this lovely uh, thing to go to the WI meeting this evening. <laughs> that? That? What do you think of it, kids? <laughs> right! That does it! OK, 
Hey, you brats, blue eyes, you play it again, Sam. What a fight! No. I've had enough! Yeah! Question time. Aww. Now listen very carefully. We'll do this side first. Where am I going this evening? WI meeting. WI meeting. Well done. Horrible little brat. Come down here. <laughs> Quickly, we haven't got all day. Come on. Go down there and stand over there. Next question. Where was Redford's tape measure? Redford. Yes. Redford. Round his neck. Down you come. Join that little one there. Stop! <laughs> Last and final question. Who is the president of the WI? Fred. Phrase. Not quite. Phrase. Phrase? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Pardon? Magnificent phrase. The magnificent Fred. Clever little clogs. Come down, you come. There's our three little clogs. What, what? Look Redford. what I found over there in that post office. Look. Ooh. Redford. Redford, at last. You've done something really clever. Oh. You've found something for me to put that emu in. <laughs> no, no, not emu. No. This, this is to finish off my creation. Look, look, I'll show you. Look, I just cut a hole in there, you see, and I drape it all over your head, and it'll finish off my lovely model perfectly. Oh, I'm thrilled. Come on, come on. Ha! I'll see you later. Go on yeah. in. You're the boo. And we'll see our friends and a whole lot more later in part two. All right, kids. straight on with a spin quiz. As you know, our star prize went on our first spin quiz, so let's see what the new star prize is. Star prize, star prize, star prize. And our star prize is this fabulous pair of binoculars. Wow! And who's helping me? Emma's going to help me. You're going to help me, as you yeah. know. The, last, the, the, the answer to last week's quiz question was stickers. That was what Emu got for being a good patient. And you've been picking out all the, all the right ones? Yes. Have you got I've got them? Tracy Cowell, and she's 11 years old, and she comes from Devon. Comes from Devon? Yes. Well, OK, Tracy, I hope you're watching, because Emma's going to get on the phone to you right now. As you know, we, if it stops either side of the sales, we're going to count that as a star prize as well, aren't we? From Devon, did you say? Yes. We're going there, aren't we? We're going to go there for our holidays. As soon as we finish the Pink Windmill show today, we're going to zot down in because we're going to stay at Payton for a fortnight. <laughs> going to go paddling in the sea. It's going to be good fun, isn't it? And so is this, if we ever get through. To, uh, so, yeah. we are, we are, we're going straight through to Devon, aren't we? Yes. In Devon, in glory, we are staying. No? Oh. <laughs> He's got awful breath. Yeah, what? It's ringing. it's ringing. At least it's ringing in Devon. So, but there's nobody in in Devon. <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, answer the phone. Tracy! Answer the phone. No? i tell you what we'll do. We'll try and get through to somebody else, all right, as fast as we can. But put that down. Whilst we're doing that, Tracy, we did try you, darling, but we'll have to try somebody else later on if we get the time. But why don't we cross over right now, for the last time in this present series, uh, to the Pink Windmill Post Office! <laughs> some of the last letters before we close down the Pink Women Post Office for this series. Mm. And uh, thanks for everyone who wrote in to us and over the past few weeks. Yes, whether you wrote to us individually, to the show, or to Rodney, you asked them to do something. You should be receiving your replies very soon. And do you remember me thanking the people at the post office for um, sorting out the unusual letters, like um, this one, for instance, the plate that came to us, and it got bags with the speaking address, and uh, they even stamped the postcode on our nose. Yes, and I've got one from a six-year-old. 
and she's not really old enough to write properly herself, but she knew exactly what she wanted to say. So she did it all in stencils and bright colours. Thank you, Kelly, it's lovely. And uh, when we open this one up, look. It's a big emu, look at that, isn't that nice? And that's from Sabrina Benzing, and she's age six. Thank you, Sabrina. Yes, and here's one from Anna Gregory of Northwood, and it reads, Dear Rod and Emu, I have told my daddy I'm going to wash his car, but it is a bit of a big one, so I wondered if you could come and help me. Well, here's what happened. Hello, Ada. Hello. Hello. You're the one who wrote to us at the, at the Pink Windmill Post Office, aren't you? Yes. Asking us to wash the car with you. Well, we've come to help you, haven't we? Would you, would you like to stroke him? Yeah. Ow, oh, look. All right, well, show us the car and we'll start washing it. Where is it? That one? Well, it's a big one, isn't it? Here, yeah, Anna. It's very difficult, all this. Have you got any brothers and sisters who can help us? Yes. You, you've got someone. Who, who, who have you got? Um, ben. Ben, come over here. He's not going to be, be much help, is he? Come on. Oh, oh, quick. You just, oh, come on. You're ever so good. Let me go like this. But he... Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Ah, that's cleaned out the inside of the petrol tank for them, isn't it? We've got to open the window to clean it. Have you got anything in there that's going to help us open the... Yeah. No, don't! Don't do that. Don't! You've probably wet something very important, like a tile or something. Have you got any more brothers and sisters who can help yes. us? Where? Take that. Take it up there. Go on, get it up there. Stop. And you go up here. And you go around. You go over there. And you go up there. And you go around there. <laughs> Stop. Come on, then. Up here. Round here. That's it. Down, down. Over there. Stop it. I'm supposed to be washing him down. That's it. Up there. Washing the... <laughs> over there. That's the way. Okay. Again, so let's go and join the spin quiz. Yeah, I've got it now. Hello, Tracy. Hello. You are there. Yeah. We did get through to you. I'm ever so pleased. So you're down in glorious Devon, and as you know, we've got to ask you a question. And if you get it right, we'll, we'll spin the wheel for you and hope that you win those super binoculars. All right. Yeah. And the question is: In a novel by Charles Dickens, which small orphan asks for more? Did you get Oliver. that? Oliver. Oliver is right. Yes. Hold tight, here we go! Oh, I hope it's going to be a star prize! Because it is the last one, isn't it? Come on! Yes! It wasn't a cheat because it would have stopped there anyway. And you've won those fabulous binoculars. Can we see them, Abby? There they are, complete with a little case. All right? Thank you very much. We take them over there and get them posted off for us. Thank you very much, Tracy. Yeah, thank you. See you later again, I hope. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and now let's go over to Bob Bags Grotto. <laughs> Welcome to Grot Bags Grotto for the final time. <laughs> right. Redford, they know what they're doing out there. These do too. Let's have our first victim. Right, Mrs. Grotbag. <laughs> this is our first contestant. This is Sarah. Now then, Sarah, you know the game, don't you? You've got five cauldrons there to choose from, numbered one to five. Pick a number. Four. Number Go four. Go and get number four, Go and get Sarah. Number four, Sarah. That's it. Bring it over. Put it down there. You're very right now, nice Sarah, we want to show all the boys and girls at home what you've won, so I'm switching on my computer. Right, there we go. <laughs> Now, right now, Sarah, instead of that prize in there, I'll offer you a beautiful book. Grey fries, Bobby. Oh, stop. You can have... Oh, look at this. Yuck! Streaky Bonehead's written some more poems. Yeah, yeah. Now that. Take that away with... 
little pussy cat picture to put on your bedroom wall. Oh, oh isn't it nice? And a little Wilbur. Oh, All that like for your cauldron. What are you going to do? You don't have the cauldron. Are you sure? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a book token as well. I'll give you an... Oh, look! Oh, my lovely little eemy weemy. Oh, oh, I don't really want to give that away, but... All right, I will. I'll give you that as well. You yeah, that or the cauldron? Which would you like to have? Cauldron! You cauldron. She wants the cauldron! You want the cauldron? You've won... Pardon? I beg your pardon. Um, the cauldron. You want to take the cauldron? I thought you did. You, you know what you won? Yeah. I'll put all this back. You sure you don't want to change your mind? <gasps> you ate brats. You have won the electronic typewriter. Oh! oh! <laughs> Here we are. Take it away! Nasty, yes. horrible brat! Our next contestant yeah. is Stephen. Come over here, Stephen. That's the way. Now, you've got four to choose from. Turn around so the people at home can see you. That's it. One, two, three or five? Three. Number three. Go, go get three, three, Stephen. Hey, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Come on, over here. Well, I've got to show the boys and girls at home what you've got in the cauldron. Right. Now then, off we go for the bar. Now, then. Stephen. Exciting. Stephen, she didn't take it, so it's still here. Oh. Reluctant to coat. No, I don't think I'll keep that. I'll keep that one myself. Oh, look at this! Look, masters of the universe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and and a lovely game, yeah. dice game. Look at that. Yahtzee. Yahtzee. And um, and uh, what else can we find? It. Oh, a beautiful plastic box. Plastic box. It's got a watch inside it. Oh well, that's look different. at this. There's a beautiful watch. Look at that. Look at oh. that. <laughs> you can have all yeah. that. Send me a cauldron. What you going to do? Cauldron. Cauldron. Cauldron? Yeah. Think there's something exciting in there? I don't know. You don't Taking know. a chance, aren't you? I'll put all this back then. You know what you've won? You've won the clock radio. Oh! 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 Oh, that's I it. wish I hadn't started and this. Today. This is Alistair. Hello, right, Alistair. Now, Alistair, you can choose number one, two, or five. Five. Number five. Go and get number five, Alistair. Go. That's the way. Get the clock back. Let's show the boys and girls at home what's in it. Here we are. Right. Here we Alistair, go. Alistair, I will offer you Yahtzee. Cluedo. Cluedo. That's a good game. Do you know that game? Wilbur. Oh, he's lovely. I can be very friendly, he said. Say nothing about that. Reluctant poot. Secret Places by Janice Elliott. I know that. They are all out like for that. What you do? Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, there's got to be something else in here. There. A bus. Oh, oh, oh. I'm fed up with this. Do you know what you've won? You horrible brat. You've won my last prize of a portable high five. Oh. 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 I'm not going to do this game ever again. Oh, Go on, watch him, you shot. No, and you can be quiet. Oh, it was right. Right. Hi. Well. We thought we'd pick out one of Emu's super special records today because it's the last program in the series. Oh, and we thought, what better one than that? Do you remember at Christmas last time we had the place all decorated and everybody joined in with all the, that lovely song, me and the kids and even Grot Bags and even Crop was in it and all the people from Boggle's Kingdom. So we'll play it because I think it's a very fitting one. Watch down there and you'll see the pictures. <laughs> Give us a moment of doubt When we 
between you and me. Even catastrophe couldn't break up what we got together. So what it lies beside gives us a minus sign. We got a mighty big plan. Something that always will be there. Of a feather, we laugh at the weather. We know that our feathers won't muss. Whether it's shower or sunshine, we got us. Life is a puddle, you just gotta muddle through. We know it ever was thus. So we all huddle together. <laughs> we got There we are then. Well, Emu, time to close the pink windmill, isn't it, eh? Oh, but we've, we've had some fun, and I'm sure that we should be opening it up again in the new year. But not only is it me and Emu saying goodbye, what about our kids? They want to say it too.